So last week, I called David down at Team 321 in uh, Clearwater, Florida? Cocoa Beach, Florida. In like one week and one day, USPS delivered this to my door. And you know how long they take, so these are the, the front mounts that weld on the side of the frame for that rear suspension. So, of course, there's two of those in there. Uh, no instructions, no paperwork whatsoever. He does have instructions online. So I guess we'll look at those pretty closely before we go to cutting on this thing. So probably one of the most stressful parts of doing this install is when you start cutting your frame. Now, there's instructions on uh, David's website, which, although they're not uh, exactly comprehensive to every year model and extremely detailed as you may want them to be, but out of fairness, if you're working on a project like this, you probably better not need detailed instructions if you're gonna be cutting and welding on your truck frame. Uh, so, anyway, I went ahead and stripped down the rear subframe assembly quite a bit to where there's not a lot of it here. Then we can use the jack to raise it up and sort of do fitment. Now the first thing I did was go over to the truck bed and find the center line of the opening in the rear wheel well based on the mounting bolts um, to where it mounts the frame. So what that allows me to do is know where I want to find center on this rear suspension because nothing else really matters except for when the truck bed is on there are your back wheels centered in the opening. Uh, so anyway, I did that measurement. I found center line. Now from there, I found from center line to the rear bolt hole on the subframe assembly. So I would know how far back to center this slot. Now from there, it gave me about 14 inches from the back edge of this to where my center line is in my wheel well opening. Now that's how I knew to mark the rearmost cut in the frame. Now this, uh, this mount, it measures 12 and a half inches in length. So I know that my front slot is going to be 12 and a half inches from back here. I took my level, which you should level your frame before you start this process. I took my level and I chose the top edge of this uh, factory hole to run level from and mark it. Now what that, I mean, the major deciding factor of that height for me was that I want to be able to weld in two by two square tubing on the inside of the frame right here. And what that'll do is on the inside here, it'll lay on top of this brace to the other side and it'll keep these from wanting to, to teeter, if you will, as well as the little triangular gussets that David sends with the kit. It's kind of nice to check your work because whatever you cut and mark here, you can start making measurements off of this hole to the back and to the front and the height here and here, and then verify it on the other side to make sure that your cuts are going to be identical or mirrored from each other. Now the front is much easier because this bracket is going to bolt directly to the top and as you can see, you can pretty much weld this wherever it needs to fall once that's installed. I did forget to point out that I just cut a little plus sign, if you will, and then knock these out with the air hammer. These are the factory rivets for this cross member that's gonna have to be removed. You don't need to deal with the bottom ones because we're gonna be cutting this section of the frame out anyway, and so it'll all fall out together. Technically, you wouldn't have to deal with this one either, but I just don't like it to be that close to where I'm trying to cut and measure.
So this should be the final mock-up when we're ready to start welding in place. Um, both plates are in and the beams across here. Uh, as far as the left and right alignment, you'll notice like these bolts will just barely fit on the outside edges of the frame when this thing is jacked in place. So you really don't get any movement left to right to center. So that's kind of helpful. And then front to back, you know, these are our center lines that we'd marked. And then they're basically in line with the center of the rear end. And then this two inch reinforcement, which is like quarter inch uh, two by two uh, steel tubing is laying flat against these plates and it'll be welded here and then on the inside of the frame rail on both sides and they're lined up with where the spring perches are which really that's where the pressure is going to be is the spring that's going to hold uh, the weight the rear the back half of the vehicle's weight will be suspended here so it kind of makes sense to allow that to help with the torsion of that plate we'll get this burned in uh, at least tacked in and then finish weld it with the suspension up and a bolt through there and then we can take care of the fronts later once we put the pumpkin back in so we can kind of see what the pinion angle is You know, if you haven't already, do me a favor and click that like button. It's freaking hotter than a devil's donuts out here in, in July trying to weld and grind and sandblast and everything else. But these are completely burned in now uh, on both sides, inside and out. And I went ahead and welded a little gusset right down there because I didn't really like how that frame just sort of ended at 90 degrees which makes me think there's probably a weak point. That's why I turned down this last gusset instead of making it upright at this angle to kind of support the frame at this angle as well. And I just, I just don't like those 90 degree cuts without something on them. So anyway, that's welded in. And then I took the subframe out there to start cleaning it up.
uh, sorry for the noise, the air conditioner's running over there. Um, this just kind of tells me where I need to take the paint off, and then I'll, of course, have to remark the bare metal, but I want to check this alignment first, just so I can see if I like it, and you notice it catches the back edge of both of these factory bolt holes. And it does that on both sides, which gives me a little, I mean, I don't know, a little bit of confidence that we've at least got everything lined up right. Uh, so now we can cut that paint off and tack those things on. So what my daddy says is, stick a fork in it, it's done. We finished welding up the front mounts and of course the rear mounts were already covered. The only thing we lack at this point, well, a couple of things that uh, there's really not a lot of point in us going through on the video. These are the tabs that'll be welded up here to bolt the shock in place with and he even sent us the sleeves for those. Um, Complete transparency, I just forgot to buy the shocks or to order them from the parts store. And I really wanna have them in my hand before we go welding those tabs on because I wanna make sure, honestly, I'm not even sure where the shock travel is gonna be at this point. So it's actually not a bad idea to wait until we have um, the truck loaded and then kind of see where the shock needs to be mounted so you're in the middle of its travel. So we're gonna leave the shock mounting off for now. Also, we're gonna leave the, I have the new bushings and everything for the sway bar to go back here. But the next step, which will probably be our next video, is removing this cross member because right here is our Holly Sniper EFI fuel tank. That fits a 69 to 70 Mustang, but they slide in the frame rails back here. Now, there may be some interference issues with how that sway bar mounts, so we may have to do something custom there, which, again, good to save that for the next video. Also, the reason we're not painting this stuff on this video is because we're going to have some more welding, putting some one-inch square tubing in here to rest the, the side, the edges of that fuel tank. So I figured, why paint this and then be right here painting later on? We'll just kind of do it all at once, leave this sort of mocked up until we get the fuel tank in. And then we can drop the suspension out again, pull the fuel tank out, and then paint everything once all the fabrication work is done. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, hit that like button if you don't mind, because it would have been a lot easier to not make this video and just do the work and be finished with it in this heat. But it's important. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later.